Good evening. This is Howard Goldman from the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm happy to join you to talk a little bit about macroplastique, which is the bulking agent that I currently utilize. Labory was kind enough to invite me to participate in this, and we're going to start by talking a little bit about the role of bulking agents in the treatment of stress incontinence, go on to discuss patient selection, outcomes, some tips and tricks, and then some of the advantages of macroplastique. So macroplastique is a synthetic material. It's a silicon elastomer that's non-allergenic, soft, it's not resorbed, it doesn't degrade, and it does not migrate. And it's a, it is suspended in a inert liquid that is excreted unmetabolized. This elastomer, once it's put in, it is encapsulated in fibrin, keeps its original volume, and ultimately collagen is deposited throughout the matrix. This helps prevent migration and movement and maintains its suppleness. I bring up this publication, which as you can see is from 1996. So this had, at that point already, three years of follow-up. Bottom line is, the reason I bring this up is to show you that this material has been around for a long time. And I think that's an important quality in many of the things we utilize now. We've all seen some products which come out with a fanfare, sound great, but then a few years later you may be sorry that you tried them. This is something that's been around for a long time, and I think if there were any serious adverse issues, we would have known about it a long time ago. And we know that it works. You can see even in this study years ago, half were dry improved at three years. Let's look at the AUA SUFU guidelines, which I was lucky enough to be part of. And in those guidelines, it says that bulking agents are one of the standard treatments that should be considered besides the various other more invasive surgical treatments. And what it says is bulking agents are viable treatments for stress incontinence, and the role of bulking agents may be best considered in patients who want to avoid more invasive surgical management, or perhaps patients who've had a pri previous failed procedure or a procedure where they benefited, but not quite as much as they'd like. Now, traditionally, the good bulking agent candidates were thought to be those without hyper hypermobility and with significant ISD, but there's plenty of literature that even those with hypermobility do well. I would suggest that from a clinical standpoint, patients with failed incontinence surgery, those who maybe are not candidates for going to the operating room, patients who don't want surgery right now, or perhaps, particularly in today's world where there are many patients who may be concerned with the use of mesh slings, bulking agents, and particularly macroplastique, is a very reasonable option. So let's look at some of the data. This is an interesting study from just published last year. All the patients had at least three years of follow-up. And the interesting thing here is that all of these patients just received one injection. Now these patients, some had hypermobility, some did not, so it took all of them. And as opposed to many, the way many of us practice, where if we did an injection and it wore off or it failed, we might try another one. In this paper, it was a one-time shot and that was it. And even with that, you can see that at three years, both objectively and subjectively, there's a roughly 50% cure rate. And when you look at improvement, you can see if you look at uh, very much better or much better on the PG PGII, almost two-thirds of the patients at three years had sustained improvement with one injection. As far as adverse events, really minimal. And as they say here, these three-year results show that this is an acceptable treatment for stress incontinence with stable results over time and a negligible complication rate. Here's another study, also recent, that looked at macroplastique for patients with ISD. And what they did is they actually divided it in, into three groups. Those who had never had anything before, those that had had prior incontinence surgery, and those who had had prior incontinence surgery and a bulking agent injection. And success was uh, answering question three on the UDI-6 with an, either a zero, which means dry, or a one, and having had no reoperation for stress incontinence. And you can see the results, depending on the group, went from about 40 to 65%. And interestingly, the ones who did the best were those who'd had prior surgery 
with the bulking agent. This is a systematic review and meta-analysis of macroplastic where they looked at over 900 patients. Now if we look at the conclusions of this meta-analysis, they found that macroplastic sustains its benefit in the mid and long term, and also did note that this may be best suited to women who desire long-term significant improvement or cure, but with a minimally invasive procedure. Now some of the tips and tricks for injection so we often do a urethral block first, and that's very simple. We just inject a little lidocaine perimeatally at the 4 and 8 o'clock position. We try to set up all of the injection material prior to the injection, use a short-beaked injection scope, which we'll come to in a minute. And also, since there is a little bit of a learning curve as to how to do this, though I like to do these in the office, but I would recommend doing the first few on, in the surgery center or something like that, and then once you get it down, transferring it to the office setting. So this is the actual injection device. Here's the needle, here's the material, and then you just set it up with this injection device, which as you squeeze it, it provides the pressure that pushes the macroplastic out. Now let's look at a short video that goes over some of these points, and I'll, you'll see this is just a model, so I'm not wearing gloves, but let's take it away. You'll need a scope. One very important thing to tell people who are learning how to do this is it's critical to have a scope with a small beak. So this is a special injection scope that can be used for bulking agents, can be used for Botox, things like that. But the beak is very short. So essentially where the lens is and where the water comes out are very close to each other. If you use a regular scope with a regular beak, the beak goes back to about here. And so what happens is the water's coming in here and so if you move to the mid urethra or beyond the mid urethra where you would be injecting the macroplastic, the water flows actually outside the meatus and thus you don't get distension of the urethra. So always use a short beak or a special scope. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the macroplastic out. So we'll open it there. It's always doubly wrapped. So that's ready. Now we'll open the needle. And again, there's a special needle which is utilized for this. You can't utilize other types of injection needles that are utilized for, let's say, Botox, because with this material and device, it's very, very viscous, so it takes a lot of pressure to get it to flow. And so they have a metallic needle. And so putting this all together, Essentially, we go ahead and put the syringe through that. We then let the back part press on this button, let that fall back, and we line up the dots with the opening there, put it in, and then give it a twist. So now it's in securely, and then we attach the needle. And it's important to attach the needle very tightly because it's so viscous that if you don't attach it tightly, as you start to pump it, there's a lot of pressure that's needed because of the viscosity, and it'll actually start to work itself around the threads and come out here if it's not done tightly. Then we prime it to give it a few pushes till the material's at the end. There it is. Now we have to push this button back here to sort of hold off on the pressure. Now we're ready to inject. Now some people in real life do that priming part once it's in the bladder and you can see the tip in the bladder. So now we take our scope, we make sure there's the nipple on the end that we're gonna pass the needle through. We close that outflow trap. You then go ahead and put the needle through the opening here and pass it till you can just about see it coming out the tip. And then for the real world and what we'll do in the models, you kind of back it up so it's back in the scope and then we're going to hook a light cord up, and then we're going to place it in the urethra. So we're now going to place the scope into the bladder. Again, now we'll, we'll insert the needle. And then you'll see there are some marks on the needle. There's the first one, that's about half centimeter, and there's a second one that's another half centimeter. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of see 
how the needle lays within the urethra to determine where we actually do the injection. So theoretically, if you want the bulking to be in this area of the urethra, I'm gonna put the needle there and then back the scope up so there's the first mark and there's the second mark. So what I know is that I wanna kind of inject into the urethral lining somewhere around this area and that'll put me at the proper area from the, uh, uh, in the urethra, uh, just beyond the bladder neck is where we want the bulking to occur. Okay, so now we're actually gonna inject. We're gonna start with the bottom one over here. So we'll go in at about a 30 to 45 degree angle. And then once we get to the first black mark, which is there, we'll bring it out more to a zero. Then we get to zero, or the second black mark, we can start injecting. So now we're gonna inject. So you see that little bulge occurring and that's what it's supposed to look like, where it starts to fill that area. Okay. And after 30 seconds, you also push the button here to take the pressure off. Wait 30 seconds, and then you withdraw. Okay, so we've got the nice one there at the base, and now we're gonna go to the side, and it's a little harder to see the side, but there, we kind of went in at the angle. There's the first one, now we make it even, and now we go to the second one. And let's see what happens now. So see how that's kind of bulking? So this is actually what our lateral bulking just looked like. So why are macroplastic? Again, as I noted earlier, this has been around for a long time. It's got a good track record with a nice cure and improvement at mid-long term outcomes. Migration has not been seen, it doesn't degrade, and you get a stable response. This can be done either in the OR or, as I preferred, in the office. Low rate of adverse events, different types of patients, and again, a very long track record. So let's look at a case. This is a 57-year-old woman with recurrent stress incontinence after a transopterator sling. No urgency, physical exam. She has a positive cost stress test, Q-tip 0 to 20, and a low PVR. So what are the options? Well, she could do physiotherapy, she could do macroplastic, some other kind of sling. In this case, this patient really didn't want any more surgery. She had already had one sling, and she underwent a macroplastic injection, one tube, and actually turned up almost dry and was quite happy. At six months follow-up, she stayed almost dry and was happy and was thrilled she did not have to undergo another surgery. Now, when we look at that meta-analysis again, I think it's nice to know that with all those papers, you have an about a 64% long-term improvement rate, which is important. And overall, when you look at macroplastic, it's important to have that long-term track record. You know what you're getting. It's minimally invasive. Again, you can start in the OR, but I would rapidly move over to the office. Very low adverse event rate and a significant improvement rate. And these are all important features, and these are all reasons why well, I think this is something that really needs to be in the urogynecology or the urology armamentarium. And with that, I'd like to end and thank you and wish you a good meeting. Uh, enjoy. Thank you.